Morning, church. Are you ready to worship? Hey, come, let's uh, stand on our feet as we prepare our hearts to worship. Lift him up. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We You can do 
chains hit the ground. God of revival, glory to glory to Come awaken our hearts, Lord. Come revive our hearts, Jesus. Lord, with your breath, with your life, Jesus. There's no prison wall you can break through, no mountain you can move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all Things are possible, things are possible. i 
glad for God's love today? Oh, I'm grateful for God's love in my life. No matter how many times I screw up, no matter how many times I turn my back on Him, no matter how many times I try to push Him away, I turn around and He's still there. He's still patient. He's still loving me. Can we give God a hand? Thank you, Lord. Turn around and say hi to somebody from whatever distance is comfortable for you.
hope you're all doing well this Sunday morning. I'm Stacy, and I'll be doing announcements. And uh, first, uh, parents, if you want to dismiss your children to Children's Church, they should be over in that door. We'll do our temperature checks, and then we'll put in your number, and yeah, that's how we'll get you started in there. Today's snacks are clementines. I don't know if your kids like clementines. Mine loves them, so... Uh, and we're really excited to have our kids' ministry open. We are taking measures to make sure all the kids are safe. We wear masks. All our snacks are prepackaged. We have our kids sanitize their hands before eating. Uh, we have a sink in there that they can wash their hands. And so we're making sure that everything is done to keep everyone safe and healthy and learning about Jesus. Yeah. So the next announcement is the men's group. They are meeting on Friday. They're going to be here at the church uh, at 5 p.m. And you can sign up by emailing James Bagley at newhopelegacy.com. And uh, I really hope you can uh, come. It's a really good time. Men just go there to connect and talk story. Just check in to see how you're doing. And it's all about building relationships. So if that's what you're looking for, you're looking to plug in and connect, I encourage you to go to the men's group. It's Friday night again at 5 p.m. The next event we have is the Women's Fellowship. They're hosting an event at Cindy's, Mike and Cindy's house. That's Saturday the next day, and that's from 11 to 2 p.m. It's, they, they have a pool there. They have a hot tub. Their house is beautiful. They have a, just this gorgeous view. That's a picture I took. They had me come over, and I took that picture. So that's the view they have. It's just absolutely amazing. So women, if you're looking to connect and fellowship with each other and to make connections, I really encourage you to go to that. And we have Margaret's email address and her phone number. So if you want to sign up RSVP, please reach out that way. And the last event is our baptism service. That's September 12th. Our location is tentatively uh, Pine Trees. We're going to update that this week, so you'll see where it is. If you go into Pine Trees, if you take a right, it's the first cove. That's where we'll be hosting the baptism. So if you want to get baptized, make an outward confession of an inward change. We really encourage you to sign up for that. You can email info at New Hope Legacy, and we can get you set up get you hooked up with Pastor Trenton to talk through the process of what baptism means, is it right for you, and to get you prepared for that. And now I'm going to welcome Pastor Trenton to the stage. Thank you, Stacy. Good job. All right. Well, happy Sunday, everybody. I want to welcome everybody here in the room. It's good to see your smiling faces, and thank you to everybody joining us online as well. Um, just real quick, since there have been a couple of changes and announcements this week going out, uh, we are seeing the COVID numbers going up. Let's just acknowledge that this is happening. The mayor's put out some new announcements and things. There's nothing structurally changing for our church. There's nothing that directly affects our ability to conduct service. But I would ask that you be extra respectful, extra mindful of uh, what's happening in our community. Um, and as you're moving around the room and coming in and out and interacting face to face with people, let's just be intentional to mask up and respect each other and uh, spread the gospel, not cooties. Amen? <laughs> All right. A uh, couple of real quick announcements that I want to hit. We talked about them last week, but uh, we do have the Art of Marriage seminar coming up on September 18. I believe there's two spots left. We've had a number of families sign up. My wife and I are going to be there. We're really excited to be able to participate. I believe there's still two spots left. So if you're even halfway inclined to do it, get your name on the list before the person next to you. Unless the person next to you is married to you, and then it's okay if they get their name on the list first. That's all right. Um, the seminar is free to attend. There's a $15 workbook that you're asked to purchase just for class materials. Lunch is provided, um, and child care is also provided as well. So it really doesn't get much better than that. This is the 18th of September. Um, also, Reach Youth Ministry. I want to mention real quick again, Mikey, could you raise your hand? Can we give this guy a hand? He and his team have such a passion to share the gospel with the young people of our community. And this past week, we saw the launch of um, Reach here again, collaborating with um, New Hope Legacy. We're just delighted to have this opportunity again. I want to 
welcome everybody that's participating and helping make this thing happen. I stopped in on uh, Wednesday night and saw just a, an amazing crowd of young people here that were excited to be learning about God, excited to worship together and gather together. Uh, they're also taking appropriate safety precautions. I, I got challenged by the bouncer at the door to take my temperature before I came in. I laughed at her. I said, Joanne, just give me a hug. You know. <laughs> then she took my temperature and then she let me in. You know. But it was cool. And seeing you guys um, preserving the ability to share the gospel, even through the crazy stuff that's going on, th this team just has an amazing heart to, to see the gospel shared. See young people impacted. Um, if you are interested, if you have young people that are interested in participating, um, you can either email info at newhopelegacy.com or go see Mikey after service. We'll make sure that you get the information that you need as to the days and times and events and all that stuff. But it's worth checking out. All right. I got some very special folks to welcome to the stage right now. Uh, James and Yvonne Martin, can I call you up here? These are small group coordinators. Can we give them a hand as they come? We're getting ready to relaunch our small groups ministry, and these folks have been working hard behind the scenes to get everything structured and in place and ready to go. And I asked them to come today and share their heart about the impact that small groups and house church have had on their marriage, on their family, and their story over the years, their testimony. And then talk a little bit about the heart of what we're trying to do, because it's not coincidence that all this is happening, is this crazy stuff is happening in our community, and still a crazy season in our church, and everything moving and changing and all that. And it's just God's timing that we see this thing coming together and gelling. So could you share, us, share with us a little bit about what's on your heart and... Uh, everything we've been chatting about. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Um, I'm Yvonne, and this is my husband, James. Uh, we're here to share a little bit about our experience with Ohana Group or Home Church Cell Groups. It's a little bit different in whatever church community you're in. James and I got married about 12 years ago, and we bought a big house, which was ended up being way bigger than we expected. We're like, oh, what are we going to do with all this space? And so we just really prayed over our house and said, Lord, what, what do you want done here? What is We want to give our home to you. And... Um, the church that we were involved in did house churches, as they call them. Um, and so we were involved in another one, but we decided to go ahead and open one up in our home. And we had a, one of the assistant pastors come in and be one of the leaders in our house church. And um, right after that happened, I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. And so we started meeting and we had people come into our home and we would uh, make meals for them, which um, we'll talk a little bit about is not always you know necessary but we would make meals for people we would have people on Tuesday nights and we would have anywhere from three to 50 people in our house on a Tuesday night and we would all break bread together and pray together and worship together and do things together as a house church and I actually was thinking a lot about this this morning I had no idea how emotional I would get going over this story and trying to think back of what I wanted to share with everybody this morning. And I was thinking back on all the people that have touched our lives that have been through our home in the last 12 years. Um, outside of our conventional friends and family, these are the people that we, we prayed with. These are the people that we shared life with. These are the people that knew our hearts and our desires and the prayers that we have in ways that we didn't share with other people because maybe they didn't have the same belief system that we had. Um, we had our daughter and as the years went on, she learned to walk and crawl in the circle between all of these people. You know, we, um, we've, had, we've had people come in that were just broken and they didn't have anywhere else to go. And we have seen lives transformed in the circle of our home, you know, in our living room where we sat. And we've had um, marriage proposals. We've had, we've seen marriages come back from divorce into just Remar we've had people be remarried. They've been th completely divorced and remarried, two couples actually. Um, we've seen tragedy and we've seen some beautiful things happen through that. So it was, it's been really important to us. And as we stand here today, just being in Hawaii, um, when we moved here a little over a year ago, those are the people that were our biggest prayer warriors and our biggest cheerleaders in getting us here because we have a testimony of moving here to Hawaii that lasted about 10 years. So. It was really just important to us to share how important that is, that these are the people, if you don't know who people in your church, if you don't know, if you don't have a, somebody that you pray with, if you are feeling alone or you just don't know who to talk to, it's really important to get plugged in. We've had people over the years, some have shown up 
and they've been participated in our house church and decided maybe it wasn't for them. And they went on to other house churches. They've tried a few times. They didn't connect. Maybe, you know, it just wasn't the right chemistry with some people. And they moved on to other house churches, and that's okay. And at one point, like I said, we, we've had as many as about 50 people, and we, just, we had to make a decision a couple of times to go, you know what? We love everybody in this room, but we really just have, we're growing, and we need to spread our wings. And so we replanted other little house churches and different houses. So, and we've gone through um, different seasons with that over the years. So we just wanted to share how important that is. And so I got up this morning and as I was praying about how to share this morning, I started texting all of the people that were important in our lives over the years. And it was just so sweet, the pouring of the prayers that people had for us this morning, even just to get up here and tell you guys just how important it is to get connected with somebody, to have people um, that you can share your life with like that in such a way that just grows and helps your your life. It's gonna be hard to say anything now after that, all right? <laughs> um, I would take us back just even a little bit further. I was thinking about this. Um, we were going to church for like five years and we just didn't really know anybody. You know, you can walk past people, you check in on Sunday, you check out and I just, wasn't really getting to know anyone, and uh, about five years went on, and our pastor mentioned that we're uh, not doing Wednesday nights. We'd have a Sunday service, right, in the mornings, too, and then one in, uh, one in uh, uh, Wednesday evening, which I'd go to once in a while, and, um, the, and I'm an introvert all the way. Some people, like, they might see me out, out in town, like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. <laughs> so, um, why I'm telling you this is that um, the pastor announced they're going to start doing house churches or same thing as Ohana groups. Um, I've also heard them call cell groups. So, um, and that they're going to make Wednesdays go away. So I was like, oh, dude, this sucks. Because I knew, you know, it's easy to just check in late on Wednesday and get out before anybody else, you know. And I mean, I actually told one of the pastors that. It's like, you know what, I've been coming here for a long time and I don't know anybody. And he said, well, are you one of those that show up late for a service? I was, you know, sitting at the back. And uh, are you the same one that also takes off right before service ends? I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I was too. So. Um, so knowing that, and then us getting married and family, um, I married and she has uh, two boys already. So it was like a family, and family just had water. And um, before we even had our booger over there. And um, so I thought, okay, well, I, I want my family to really grow with God. And I got to, I got to leave from the front on this. So we um, went to, for like six months, um, the first house church or a hunting group. And you really saw the dynamics like nothing else. Um, you see a big, we have a fairly big church, and um, it's hard on a Sunday to really get that kind of um, local um, Ohana family type atmosphere just because there's so much going on, right? And what it created was, like my wife was saying, is just a community within a community. It was beautiful. Um, and with us just getting the house and having having a baby girl and stuff, um, we had room and I felt like the Lord was telling me and telling us, um, we need to open up our house. And I was just like, oh man, I mean, yeah, you're right, I should. But oh my gosh, um, people that showed up uh, hosting um, was beyond my comprehensive how beautiful it'd be. Um, for us, my want, desire was to feed people. That doesn't mean that's what you do. And we'll talk about that here briefly at, uh, at these Ohana groups. That's just what worked for me or worked for us. Um, and worked for some of the parents, right? Some of the parents would be getting off work, grabbing their kids, and then they knew that they had a meal when they came you know, here right? or came to our house, house churches, um, which was good, right? And, and we could just throw down anything, so whatever it took. Sometimes I couldn't barbecue because we were both um, working at that time and Sometimes it was going past Winco or um, um, Costco and um, trying to grab something to throw it, on the, throw it down on the table. So it was cool. And people always helped out and brought stuff if they wanted to. Um, later, um, worship began in our, in our house church. 
and we just started. I, I didn't know really how to play guitar. I wouldn't say I still do, but I can play a couple three chord songs, right? And, um, and people kept coming back. And it was, you had to build that trust, right? Like within the family, you have to like, can, can I trust you? And um, once people did, you find, I found out this, this, one, this one lady who is a dear friend of ours, Lynn, I don't know if you're out there watching, but um, she would be one of those that would be the last one come in our house, church, and then the first one out. But after the months, I found out she could play guitar. And then I found out somebody else knew how to play the drums. And before you knew it, we had this little mini four-piece band of everybody, you know, playing. I do. I, I switched from not doing uh, guitar, which was a good thing back then, especially, and uh, started doing some drum beats and stuff like that. So it was just really cool, you know. But I think what it also was, it wasn't a an, um, a cookie cutter. Um, like you have to do this, this, and this, right? It was. It was what worked for that family, because as we all, all of us as families are different, right? So sometimes it would just be getting to know everybody, and, and maybe whatever I had to tell somebody or, or talk about um, would wait, and we just prayed. And that's how that day went. You know, that's how that house church thing went for that time. Um, after hosting for many years, um, and I worked at Home Depot, I was a store manager, uh, worked with uh, Home Depot for 24 years. And so it was hard cranking hours there, doing the leadership thing there, going and doing the leadership home, and I really wanted to avoid doing the um, leading and the shepherding, right? But I knew after a while it was in my heart to, I needed to step forward and start doing that. And that took me, again, this introvert into a different place um, who started doing uh, shepherding or, or leading in these um, Ohana groups, which was really special. Um, and all the things I got to experience was, and the beauty of it was through people. It really was. And, and like she said, um, they, you, you just form a bond. And it's amazing. You can go the first time to um, Ohana group, right? You go to church and you see that person. You might have even forgot their name. But, oh, wait a minute. I, I, and even just kind of like one of those what's up kind of things, you know. You can just acknowledge. So... You start bringing it together more. And, and again, with the COVID thing, well, I guess we should talk about some questions and answers, right? Um, we, we have some stuff for that too, you know? So I couldn't, I guess, in ending, encourage you guys enough to just show up. Um, I don't know about you, I don't know how many times I've shown up to church and did not want to be here. And, but every time I left, I was glad. So um, it's just a tight bond. There's a, I had a, well, I've just had her, um, Jamie girl over there, and um, I'll give you one example of that. And I asked one of my Ohana people, right, who happened to be doing the leading at that time, and um, he had to take me to the hospital at 2 o'clock in the morning. And therefore, my wife could stay home with my baby and, you know, get me there. But that was the kind of relationship we had. That, that's the type of family relationships we still have with them. Like, when we come back to visit the mainland, we, we look forward to seeing them sometimes more than our real family, too. So biological families, I'd say. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we shared a little bit um, about our experiences, but I'm going to ask James a few questions about Ahana groups that I think that some people might ask, and then we'll um, hopefully be able to shed a little bit more light on anything that we missed because we kind of shared more personal, but we're going to get down to some of the nitty-gritty. So... Um, based on our testimony, I'm sure you guys kind of understand what we're getting at here, but is there anything that you would call, like what is an Ohana group and what, what does that entail? Ohana groups are just um, really meant to be, when we have 50, we split that up pretty fast because you lose, you start losing the, the, the closeness, you just do. And it's hard to facilitate it as well because there's people, you know, I'll bring the word, let's say, when I was doing the leading, and, but I would bring it out, but then go around to see for participation, right? And there's always somebody that always has no problem saying anything, and then there's the quiet one, and I love picking on the quiet ones, too, because they had so much wisdom in that, right? So um, groups really are supposed to be small. I wouldn't go any more than 10, and that has, I'm not talking about the COVID thing. I mean, yes, yes, we'll do the COVID thing, but we really try to keep them under 10 to 12. 12 was like max. And the whole idea also is not just developing a family and support group within, but um, being able to divide and split in a good way, right? In a way where you bring up others to lead or you bring up others to host. So um, it really is just a getting together in an intimate group. 
And that can be praying, that can be just sharing some food, that can be the word, you know, which is extremely important, prayer, yeah. Awesome, so what, James, would you say it would entail to be a host of an Ohana group? Mm -hmm. So um, we really need help for hosts and shepherds, um, AKA uh, leadership, right, facilitators. So hosts, and I've heard a lot of questions about this, and we, we'll, we'll be at the, um, what do you call it, the foyer up there, uh, at a table to answer more questions, but um, we're looking at hosts to just ha open up their house. Now some may go, whoa, 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 whoa. My house is really small, or I live in an apartment. Okay, that's fine, that's totally cool. What's the beauty of, of um, Hawaii, right, and uh, Kona is we can, we can go outside. So do you have a park next, you know, close by? Does your business at work um, have a place, you know, you could host there, uh, a park, um, a playground? I mean, if you go look in the book of Acts, kids, were, you don't think there was chickens and all kinds of dogs running around while they're doing their house churches, right? Um, and kids running around playing, they were. So, um, yeah, it's just, if it's put on your heart, and, and if you believe in what God's telling you, urging you to do, then you'll find a way to do it. But, um, and God will find it for you and there'll be a peace in that. So it's, you do not have to feed anyone. You do not have to play music or any of those other things. Okay, we, prayer, I would think would be high in the priority list and the word of God, right? Um, so that's, that's hosting. Just open up your house, that's it. Awesome, that was gonna be my next question is, do I have to feed people? Um, yeah. And that's not required. Some people do potlucks, some people, we provided food because we had a lot of families at the time and so they were getting off work and rushing over with their kids and so, and it was oftentimes as, as simple as some chicken legs and rice. It wasn't like we, you know, created this big gourmet meal for a lot of people, so. Okay, so what would you say a shepherd of an Ohana group is? Yeah, a lot of people uh, used to ask me, because we've been, I'm oh, sorry, we've been doing uh, these. We've also been on a committee as well for um, Ohana groups um, back in Oregon where we were. And um, you just have to have a willingness to help others, which hosting is too, right? But in a leadership type of way. So I often get the question of, or, or the comment of, well, wait a minute, I, I don't know the Bible that well. Like, oh my gosh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, it's... None of us know the Bible that well, okay? I don't care if you're a scholarly expert. You have, it doesn't mean you anything to know, right? It's the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit working through us, uh, breathing through the Word of God to even if it's a couple verses and it needs to be put out there as far as we need to rest, right? Or, God, or you know, Jesus saying, don't worry about tomorrow, right? Okay, let's talk about that. There you go. There's, there's your... If God's putting it on you, there's your conversation right there. So it's just having a willing heart also to make sure others, when it's the right time, can participate as well. You know, I'm going through, I'm almost finished my degree in, in ministry and theology. Um, I've got a couple more classes left, and I know that, I know that much, if, it, if less than that, about the Bible. So it's just having that willing heart. Awesome. Thank you. So... Um, when are Ohana groups going to start meeting? Um, we looked around with them. We, we've talked to Trenton as well, but we want to give some lead time out there for people as well. We're going to have a meeting with whoever. We look at possibilities of um, hosts or um, leadership or both, um, which you can do both if you want. But we're going to go for, I think it's the, 20, uh, the, the week of the 20th or 21st. That's when we're going to kick those off. Now, where those are gonna be and what times are those gonna be, that's what we're gonna to get to find out here the next two weeks, because when we do that, then we can start, you know, again, getting with the staff here and seeing who will actually um, lead, host, or both, and then we can start logistically mapping that out, um, which is, you know, we have one place in Waikoloa, right, possibly, um, yep. with Chris and Margaret, and um, we have others possibly uh, our house, obviously, will be doing one in the Palisades area. I'm looking for somebody in the Cook area would be awesome, too. But it gives people the chance where, okay, Tuesdays work better for me, so I'll show up at Tuesday night. Um, or, you know what, after Sunday afternoon. See, for me, I don't like doing Sunday afternoons. I like that just with my family, and that's it, right? But other people, it works beautifully. You know, some people, I don't want to be around people right now with stuff going on. That's cool. We're going to, we'll be firing up a uh, Zoom 
or, or some kind of uh, media to do a Zoom Ohana. You know, that's better than at least seeing faces and being able to talk and pray for one another just adds way more depth than if not doing it at all. So, yeah. Yeah, so if anybody's interested in being a part of an Ohana group but you're not ready to be in-person group, um, let us know and we can, we'd like to set up a Zoom one for people that are in that place. Um, also, you know, we keep talking about host and shepherd. The, you can either, maybe you want to open up your home, but you're just not ready to feel like you can lead um, or facilitate what that looks like. It's okay. We can try and find somebody else that might be a leader that just don't have a home to open up so we can partner people together. Or if you are in a place where you can do both, your home is big enough to host somebody and then you also have the means and the time to put into leadership as well. Um, and like James said, the, the leader that we had once before, we, we called him, at, I had to call him at two o'clock in the morning once. And um, not that you guys have to do that, but these are the types of <laughs> relationship that you develop. And so um, James also has a bit of history with teaching and coaching leadership and management styles. So if you guys, if anybody's out there and you're like, I don't know, like, what does that look like? I think I might have it in me, but I'm not sure or whatever. He's a really good resource to talk to about that sort of thing. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, and we'll also, there'll be different times too, which is cool. So it can be Tuesday at like five, or maybe it's going to be somebody uh, Sunday at three in the afternoon. You know, maybe that works. So it really gives you an opportunity to plug in wherever and, and get involved. Um, so that, yeah, really good stuff. And then also there, uh, we talk about there's sometimes the Ohana groups just happen to work out to where it's families. Uh, I seen another Ohana group um, that was just seniors and they have grandkids and they love them, but they just want an organized structure. Um, and so they picked a plan that worked for them and they didn't have kids, but it didn't mean they didn't like them. They just, that was what they did and it worked for them. So lots of great diversity, which is awesome. Yeah. All right. Do you think we have anything else? Do you have any I questions? got some questions. Oh, I was hoping you would. <laughs> Absolutely. That was part of our... Yeah, we are just so excited about this. And I love hearing the heart behind what you guys are sharing of the, the role that this has played in your life, that this isn't just something you did for a while, but this is, this is a meaningful part of your walk with God, your growth as a family and, and all these heart things that go along with it. Um, okay, a couple of practical questions. I'm going to come back yeah. to the heart stuff. But you, you talked about um, the difference between a, a shepherd and a host. Mm -hmm. So somebody has a home that they can make available, but mm -hmm. they're not necessarily comfortable leading a group. Yep. That's that's doable. And if somebody's maybe comfortable leading a group and navigating those conversations, but they just don't have a place to do it, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a place for everybody. And, and whatever yep. the gifts, whatever the resources, there's a place for you in this process. Um, the commitment level on this, you mentioned it's going to be starting on the 21st. Um, if I sign up to start or join an Ohana group, um, how many decades of involvement am I committing to? <laughs> um, so we're going to do um, just a few weeks at a time, a few week increments to kind of get it kicked off and started. And then um, ideally what we're used to, you know, what we like to see is as you find a group, um, we try not to do too much of just a study. Everybody meets together, they study something and they go home. We want it to be a little more living to get like this is life. Yep. So we'll con meet continuously. We kind of um, maybe mirror a little bit like a school schedule. We'll take a big break in the winter time because, you know, people hosting might need that space to decorate their home and, you know, have friends and family coming and going. Um, and then taking the summer off because we need breaks. I mean, just like any other family, right? Yep. A little bit of break, um, but also to give the host and the shepherd the the time to just kind of take a breather and, and participation is a little bit lower in the summertime anyway, because people are heading out for vacations. Yeah. And I also just want to talk about participants. I don't know if I covered that enough, but we need participants too. So I don't want anybody stressing out like, Oh my gosh, it's either a host or I open it, you know, or I have to lead. No, you don't. Yep. And it depends on what season you're in. Yep. Um, I, I talked to a couple of people and they said now nah, at this point in time and I, I was, I respected that. I actually was proud of them because they did do the right thing and not being a participant and trying to grind it out. And that's, that's the, what God's design is. There's a peace in it. And so, um, please, we do need participants. Please get signed up. We'll be out, out here after service. Um, you can sign up there. Um, Yvonne's working also on getting online signups too. 
But the sooner we can get you guys or people sign up out there, the sooner we know exactly uh, logistically and what time frames we're looking at. But yes, we need participants equally the same. Yep. Yeah. You mentioned the word seasons. That's an interesting word to use in this because we've, we've always had a philosophy and a mindset here at, at New Hope Legacy that there's a time to get involved and there's a time to take a break as well. On ramps and off ramps, we usually use this terminology. And this idea of um, seasons speaks so much to the nature of a house church that there, there are seasons to change in commitment level or commitment type. You know, if you're hosting a group or just participating, that's okay. The, yeah. the seasons change, then they never stop changing. Yeah. Uh, but also the idea that the house church is there through the, the changing seasons and these relationships last through the seasons is so powerful to me. Can you share um, just a little bit, you don't have to go into detail, but you mentioned to me a while back there was, there was a situation you were navigating as a family from here in Hawaii and the folks that were part of your house church back in Oregon, that was your automatic call. Can, can you just talk a little bit about what that's like, that, that relationship and the, navigating the changing seasons, your season here in Hawaii, and then suddenly there's a season of challenge and having that relationship to lean on and to engage with? Yeah, I mean, that pretty much encompasses everything that we, our house church has always been for us. And just to touch real quick on the seasons of change, we did go through seasons like that where we had times where we couldn't host or lead. And we, you know, somebody else in our church or in our house group would open up their home and we would go other places. So it wasn't like we, we just took that on for 10 years. We shared it for 10 years. And, and the, the, the group evolved. Some moved on and some stayed. Some stayed for a long time. Some went and came back and as well as us, you know, with our hosting shepherding. So it doesn't have to be, like you said, it's a season. You don't, you don't have to make a big long-term commitment for it. Um, and what was the second question? Oh, so yeah. So we moved here to Hawaii. Our house church were the people that prayed we had a prayer to move here for over 10 years and that was the group that prayed with us and walked us through getting here and they're the ones that celebrate us the most being here because they know the tears and the prayers and the, the heart behind us um coming here eventually one day but when we anytime that we go back to the mainland like when we go there um they're the ones that we call. They're the ones that we see the most. They're the ones that put us up in their home. They're the ones that have come here to visit us so far. You know, we, they're the ones that we, we connect with the most. Um, one example of that last, this last year is my dad. I'm, uh, I have legal guardianship over him, and he uh, contracted pneumonia. Mm. And so I was on the plane that, I think it was that night I was, and um, this calling one of my house church uh, brothers and like, dude, I need somewhere to stay. And he's like, good. I mean, and I knew that, but I, you know, still want to make sure. But yeah, they held us up, um, fed me when I was there and let me borrow their vehicles. I mean, it was, it was powerful, absolutely powerful. Yeah. We had an interesting situation um, somewhat like that a couple of weeks ago here at our church. We've, we saw Donna and Roy Bishop in service and just the miracle of God's work in their life. And it was so cool to me, the, the changing seasons, you know, watching them navigate these things that because of COVID and health concerns, and all these things, they haven't been able to be in service for a little while. We've been missing them, but love you guys. And I know you're watching online probably right now. Um, and Donna talked to me a little while back and, you know, their, their heart wanting to plug back in and participate and attend in person and all this. And it was strongly on her heart. She wanted to do this. And they came back and within two weeks, she got hit with her stroke. And she talked to me during her recovery process, and she said, you know, that was just God, that he put that on our hearts so strongly to reconnect in relationship and to solidify this. Now, we would have been there for you guys, whether or not you were here in person. There's the strength of relationship. Mm -hmm. But this idea that these relationships last through the changing seasons and the challenges is, is so powerful to me. No, absolutely. And, and the support in that, too. Like, just, you know, as I mentioned, the first... We first went to house church just by showing up and being a participant. And I had no idea it would take us to, you know, hosting and playing music and um, leading and then getting into going back to college again. Um, I had no idea that I would also be doing, um, I had to move away from it because um, I did the men's pastor for a short stint for a while too. And it's just, it, it's amazing when you just follow or just take those steps where it will guide you and take you somewhere you never ever expected, yeah. Can you share uh, briefly about the motto that you folks had for the, the house church ministry there? The midweek? Yeah, midweek, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, so our motto that we had was, we are midweek. 
we call it we are midweek because a lot of churches meet on Wednesday nights, but again, that's a little just another you know church. It's another corporate church, and so we did away. Our church had done away with doing corporate church on Wednesday nights and went to house churches, and we call it we are midweek. If you are like, hey, our church doesn't do a Wednesday night service, um, it's because we're we're leaving that space open to be able to meet together in community, in small community, so that we can build those relationships. If you're out there, especially this last year and a half for some people, it's just been heart-wrenching. Maybe it's been harder on you than some people know. Maybe um, you haven't, you don't know enough people in church to just go to them and to say, I'm really hurting. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn to. I just really need someone to talk to. This is where you're going to meet those people. If you, if you're going through anything like that right now, we want to hear your story and we want to connect with you because that's really important. And even if you don't have an opportunity or it's just not, you know, you're not finding a place to connect with a house church, We'd love to hear your story. We'd love to hear what you're, what you're going through and find a small community, even if it's just James and I or somebody else in the church that you want to connect with. We want to hear your story and help you out with that. And that process of building a relationship, um, I know in my life, I'm just going to speak for me, it's not always easy for me to build that level of relationship with people. But there's something about just creating that intentional time together mm -hmm. face to face and just caring about each other, talking and talking about God's word and sharing the things on our hearts. It doesn't start out a mile deep, but you might be surprised how quickly you get there when you're just doing mm -hmm. life together. And we saw that happen this last Saturday, the devotional group we've been meeting yeah. up Saturday mornings and just getting together and reading through. I think we made it through, what, two chapters in, yeah. in the last couple of months. Yeah. Just line by line, verse by verse, talking through God's word. And there was a conversation that came up this last week that we went deep in conversation. There was, there was things that came up that, you know, there was a relationship, even just in that short period of time that we've seen guys engaging just one hour Saturday mornings. But there's that intentionality and relationship of saying, I'm going to create time in my schedule to spend time with you. You're creating time in your schedule to spend time with me. And there's something bigger at play here. There's, there's something powerful when we do life together that way and just be the church. And that's what I hear in, in this motto that you folks work with. And, and to me, that's so beautiful. We are midweek. This goes beyond just a, a program or a, a plan or a structure or a task or whatever. There's an identity of saying we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And we are living this thing out together. Yeah. Um, we, a couple of years ago, we went through a time where um, my mom got cancer and we brought her to our home on hospice and my mom, I have about 12 aunties and uncles on my mom's side, she's native. So they were flying in from all over the country and we had a house full and they, they brought, you know, I have a hundred cousins at least and so th there were people flocking in from all over the place and our house church showed up without even being asked, they showed up in droves with pots of food to feed my whole family during this time because we were just all just just tired and weary going through this time with my mom. And these are the folks that just were like, we're here, here you go. And they just were bringing food for all my family. They didn't know and my family was just so touched. And I have a lot of family that's unbelievers, but they were just so touched that these, these people, they don't even know, were just showing up on our doorstep, bringing us, bringing us food for them to feed them. And that was just really important too, because it, our community with our house church spoke to my whole family. Um, and then there was another time where what, there was a young girl in our house church that um, she was pregnant and having a baby and her mom lived in Alaska so she couldn't make it to the birth and so she called me up and asked me to be there so I got to go in wow. and be, yeah. And these, so this is the connections that we have and like, and thinking about her, thinking about some of these folks and we threw, there was, we had this young couple that was in there and they were getting married and um, we threw a wedding for them. The whole house church just got together. We threw a wedding for them. We were probably half the, congregation at this actual wedding that we had. We threw a little wedding on for some friends of ours. I mean, they're just the people you do life with, but that you do life in a way that you share your, your core beliefs, which isn't always the circles, all the circles that you're in. Um, so this is where you're going to find that. Let's talk just briefly about sort of this season, both in the community and in our church right now. Um, there are folks that have a lot of concerns about health and COVID and all these different things. Um, work schedules changing. People have been off work and now back at work and maybe off work again and all these things. Um, just share a little bit about the, the conversations we've had, the intentionality in creating relationship, even where there's distance and even where there's concerns and all this. Can you speak just a little bit about some of what this might look like and the, the hope and the intention behind yeah, it? Yeah, I would say, especially during this time, especially when there's distance, especially when maybe going to church isn't super um, comfortable 
meeting with a small group and making that group your your covert or your your bubble. You know, a lot of us in the beginning, I think we all kind of learned who our bubble was and who, you know, not to reach out too far and get outside your bubble. And if you're not comfortable coming to church, but there's some, we all have a bubble of people that we'll still meet with even in those cases. And this, this is a really important way to be um, connected. So um, if you get involved in a HANA group, the, make sure it's people that you feel safe with. You know, don't, you're not going to put yourself in a position where you're, where you feel unsafe. We're, and we all have respect. If somebody wants to come in and you wear your mask or you know sit across the room, we're okay with that too. You want to do it outside? Absolutely. We're going to do it in a way, in the same way that we've navigated this whole last year and a half, right? We're going to do it at our comfort level, not ever push anybody to do something that they don't want to do and not put, not create environments where it's going to cause problems. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. Um, this is a time when you think about, and I was in the Marine Corps, and what you do with the enemy is you, you try to get people, obviously you go for the highest ranking officer or whoever's the leader, right, and you go with the person with the, the, the red plus sign, which you're not supposed to, but <laughs> it, they do. But where it really comes is like right now. Um, there's a lot of fear. And what makes it so important right now that we stay together in family, yeah, it's one body, right? And if you think about it, you, you, if you get one person, let's say you had a herd of sheep and the one starts drifting, the one starts, whoa, the one starts <laughs> drifting away, right? Um, they're easy to pick off for the enemy. The enemy is like, well, there's nobody by them, boom, and they're gone, right? So that's, that's a one way to think about it too is um, that fear creates division in a way that is not intended. And, and when you, it, it creates a um, singularity by yourself or, you know, selves at one. And that's a scary place to be because there's nobody around to take care of one another, right? So we have to be very careful, all of us, about protecting ourselves so much to the extent that we look around and there's nobody around. And yeah. that's part of the challenge with this season right now is we've talked a lot over this last year about um, safety precautions and being careful and socially distant, all this. And it, at times, um, I think just as a society over this last year, we've been so careful about the physical safety of staying distant and staying careful and all this. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten about the uh, emotional and the spiritual yes. safety. And there, again, there is a way that safety can be maintained on a physical level. We, we don't mm -hmm. have to get together nose to nose and, you know, spread cooties that way. But there's an, in, there's an intentionality in saying we're going to stay safe by staying in relationship. Yeah. This is how we preserve our emotional health. This is how we stay spiritually healthy. Um, and there's this, this family aspect of that, that it's not just my responsibility to stay connected to the group, but the group has this mutual responsibility to maintain that connection and, and this two-way relationship that happens mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and... In fact, when COVID first started back, you know, March of 2020, when everything was shutting down all over the world and we didn't know what, what to do and we're all trying to navigate what is it and where, do, you know, what, where do we sit with it? Um, house churches was the only church we had in some places, yep. in some ways, because we didn't, we weren't sure if we wanted to attend the big church with all the people that we didn't know, but we trusted, we trusted our people, yep. you know, and so it's really important to have that connection of people that you, you know, maybe church isn't the right thing right now, but your church connection is still there. Amen. All right. I had a whole message prepared, but I think we just had church right here. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is everything we're talking about. This is doing life together. This is, this is the intentionality and relationship and walking together in Christ. Um, anything else you want to share? I'm just going to close this out in prayer and let's spend some time being the church, you know, having conversations, developing a relationship, and, and learning more about the groups. you got a little table you're going to set up on the Ohana room. But yeah. anything else you want to share? So um, after service, both services today, we're going to be in the back um, in the foyer, like James said, and we'll be sitting back there. We can answer any questions anybody has. We can um, talk to you about what this looks like and see if you want to sign up or if you're interested in um, hosting, leading both, or just being a participant, and that's okay too. But I wanted to add... Um, as James touched on a little bit earlier in the um, New Testament about kids and chickens and dogs running around during house church, I sat through a sermon one time that really spoke to me in the book of Acts where the pastor said, the book of Acts is like a portal 
there's a lot of unnamed people in the book of Acts, and that portal is still going on today. We're part of those unnamed people, yep. and that house church is church. That's what it looked like. That's what we're trying to get back to, you know, church like it was in the Old or in the New Testament. So um, it is biblical. It is what is meant to be, and it is... Um, it's the book of Acts. We're trying to walk through the book of Acts and be part of the, we're part of the Bible, right? So if you're involved in the house church, you're part of the book of Acts. You're one of the unnamed people in there that, that's continuing. Um, one thing I'd like to add to that is um, it does. I mean, that's why there's gangs, because they don't have a family. We have Sorry. it in our hearts to be family, to be yep. family oriented. And if not, we'll go find it or we'll make one up ourselves. So what better than to live out the story that's still going on. Um, that's a beautiful thing. And, and to your point as well, Trenton, is um, you're right. It's, it's also about holding one another accountable in a loving way. So if so-and-so, let's say whoever, Bobby, whoever Bobby is, has been showing up for the last four weeks, we noticed that uh, Bobby was really quiet, right, and then stopped showing up. And this has happened, this has happened many a times. And so I'll reach out and talk, you know, call Bobby or go have some coffee with him and say, hey, dude, what's up? You know, and it's, it's amazing how you, you don't allow people to get too far and drifted away because we have no idea the hell they may be going through. Yep. Um, so this is definitely a way to keep us one another held accountable in, in love. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Thank you. All right. Let's pray. Okay. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for this family. Thank you for your heart that you created family. You're all about relationship, God. Restoring our relationship with you and strengthening our relationships with each other so that we can navigate this thing that we call life. Lord, I pray your blessing on these groups that we're seeing launch. I pray your blessing on James and Yvonne as they help to plan and structure this thing and communicate. Lord, help us to be the church to our community. Help us be the church to each other. Help us to be there for each other when life hits hard. Lord, I pray that you would guide the relationships that are going to be formed out of this. Help us to invest in each other. Help us to care for each other. Help us to love each other the way that you love us, God. And, and as we've been learning from your word over the past weeks, operating in unity together, Lord, may this be the, the chance for somebody to lock in in unity like they've never experienced before, to learn more about you and to stand shoulder to shoulder with their brothers and sisters in Christ and face the challenges and the changing seasons and storms together. We thank you, Lord, for it. Bless and keep each one. Bring us back safely next week, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.